It is 1713. After a decade of war, a rare peace comes to the Spanish main. With thousands of demobilized sailors, pirating has exploded in the West Indies, where the port city of Nassau serves as piracy's headquarters. One crew of pirates, calling themselves the Flying Gang, seek fame, fortune, and self-governance by building their own republic free from the constraints of kings, queens, and imperialisms. Who will prevail? This loose band of outcasts of the European colonial powers. Your ultimate mission? Forge the Pirate Republic while becoming the greatest pirates of the West Indies. The sea is your territory. Anyone on or near it, your prey. Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to start a playthrough of the Pirate Republic. And look at this board. And actually I will say this. This is on player mat, so if you did get the deluxe version of this game, it came with a player mat, and I love the player mat, so I'm not even playing with the actual board itself, I like how the player mat looks. This game was designed by Tom Butler and was published by Green Feet Games. Currently it is a Kickstarter game that just released, although I do believe he has plans on making this go to retail. What we're going to do today is we are going to do a co-op scenario. There are a bunch of questions on the rules and Tom, the designer, did send this copy to me. So thank you, Tom, very much. I'm really excited to play this for you all. Also, JPlay has an amazing solo playthrough of this game. That's why I'm going to show you the co-op version, just so you can see how it's a little bit different, because with the co-op scenarios, you actually have an objective to complete. When you play solo, kind of think of it like Mage Knight, where you're just trying to get the most points, or swagger, as they call it in this game. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the game, and then going forward, we will run through our co-op scenario. Are you guys ready? Let's get going. The first step in setting up the game is deciding which mode you're going to play. You can play this as a solo game, you can play this competitively, or you can play it cooperatively. Or you can play it cooperatively with a potential saboteur. I'm not going to play that way since I'm playing both of the different pirates. I'm going to play the full co-op mode, but just know that that's an option. So since we're doing the co-op mode, we get to pick a mission. Now there's tons of different flying gang missions that we can use, and there's one that they suggest for your first game. That one's called the Open Seas. And... I think that one's fine, but it doesn't really show you the fun part of the game. So I instead picked this one. This is called Vermin, the lot of them. Get those barnacle vermins out. When you draw this card, also draw territory cards until you get cards showing two different nations. Shuffle the unused territory cards back into the deck. We, in order to win, need to sack the main forts of two of the drawn nations. And I will say, I have failed at this the last two times I've tried it. <laughs> but I think this will kind of show you what you can have this game be. So here we have our territory deck. We're going to reveal cards until we find two different nations. So we have Tortuga, which looks to be under the French. So we're going to have to be able to take out this French uh, uh, fort token in order to win the game. And the other one, let's see. We have Roatan. That one is definitely not any nation. <laughs> so let's go ahead and flip another one. We have Bermuda. And you know who owns Bermuda? The UK, the British. So sorry, all of my UK viewers, we are going to be trying to take out your fort as well. And yeah, I didn't say sorry to the French either, but <laughs> sorry, guys. So now what we'll do is we'll just take these location cards and I'll shuffle them back into our territory deck. Next, we're going to place all these main forts on the board itself. And we're going to know where those are at the beginning of the game so that we can plan accordingly. Each of these tokens have two sides, a harder side and an easier side. We're definitely going to do the easier side. So for an example, for this one over here for the French, we have a 19 and a 15 to be able to defeat it versus a 24 and a 21. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the 19 and the 15. <laughs> Also, technically, Denmark is not mentioned to be placed at the beginning of the game, but at the, at the back side of the rulebook, there's a spot that says Denmark arrives. So I'm just going to play with Denmark because I think it's cool. So I'm going to place all five forts out on the board. 
And I'm sure a couple of you were yelling at me, calling me a stupid American because this is Denmark, not this. This is the Dutch. That is Denmark. I apologize. I am not great with flags. <laughs> but you can see on the board itself, it actually tells you where you're going to place these so you know where to place these fort tokens. Next, we're going to set up all the different decks of cards. So you've got captain missions, crews, and treasure cards. The crew and treasure cards, just shuffle them up. You're ready to go. Captain missions, I just shuffle up, and when we do draw them, if I find one that is uh, specific for competitive or needs a saboteur, I'll just discard it and draw a new one. There are some that you actually have to add, attack other ships, and yeah, I'm not going to do that in a co-op only. But just know that you can just shuffle it up and use it and then discard and draw a new one if need be. You already saw the territory cards. Just make sure to have those shuffled up and ready to go for the beginning of the game. And then we have our chaos cards. So now when you play this with two or more players, cooperatively, competitively, however you play it, as long as you play with more than two people, what you normally do is take all the chaos cards. I have them broken out right now, but really you'll take all of those and then each player will draw one. And what that card will do is it actually relates to the person next to you. So you'll have a chaos card and you'll read it. And then if ever during your teammate to your left or your opponent, if you're playing competitively, if ever the thing that's on top of here happens, you tell them to stop the gameplay, you read the flavor text, and then they have a choice they have to make or something happens to them. What I'm going to do in this playthrough, because I am playing this by myself with two players, I'm actually going to use the solo rules for how the chaos cards are going to work. And for solo, what you do is you pull out all of the chaos cards that have this icon, because all those chaos cards, or at least most of them, immediately activate. And so what we'll do is at the beginning of the round, or at the beginning of the game, we'll have each player draw one. And then every time that we roll... This icon on the tidings die, we will draw a chaos card. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, sometimes they're neutral. You just don't know. So that's how I'm going to play just because I'm basically playing solo with two characters. But do know when you play this cooperatively, you'll still shuffle all these together and you don't tell your teammates or your opponents if you're playing competitively what that chaos card is until it activates. Unless it, you draw one that says immediately uh, have something resolve, you'll do that right when you draw it. But otherwise, you'll hold on to it and wait until it tells you, well, so when they defeat a ship, then reveal or then say whatever it is. Okay. So yeah, that's just a little variant that I'm doing. The last deck of cards to get ready is the advanced action cards. Think of Mage Knight, where after you level up, you get to gain a card into your deck. It's the same thing here, except for instead of you buying it and getting a choice, you're just going to shuffle this pile or this deck up, and you'll draw the top card and put it on top of your deck. Okay, So I'll give this a shuffle, and we're ready to go. Next, you want to pick out the pirates that you're going to play as. So we're going to play as one character being Sam Bellamy, and the other pirate as Black Bart. You'll find your 12 starting cards that are associated with your pirate, and you can tell by matching the symbol on the upper right-hand side of the card to what you see on your player uh, mat that you have. You'll also want to grab one reputation token, and those are really important in this game, so make sure to grab that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle up each deck and then draw four cards for our starting hand. Now here's something else that's not in the original rulebook, but will be in the version 2.0. If you're playing the full co-op version, just like Mage Knight, we're going to have a dummy deck. And this is just so that the rounds don't take forever because players aren't trying to push each other since we're playing cooperatively. This dummy deck will push us to get to end of round. So what we'll do is we'll just pick one pirate that we're not using. So this is Blackbeard. And we're going to shuffle that deck up and draw four cards. And then just like Mage Knight, a certain amount will be discarded each round. And it may force us to end rounds early or it may not be even an issue. But we're just going to do it just like the solo game. And that is something that will be in the rules 2.0. You won't see that in the original rulebook. So now we get to decide where we would like to start on the map itself. We have to start in a location that is a neutral pirate location. 
and you can see those by these little icons that look like um, the skull and bones, that means that we can start in that location. So I'm going to start with Sam, and I'm going to put Sam, I think, over here in Andros, okay? And that's his ship right there. We'll have Black Bart in Tartola. That way they're still kind of close together because there are times when you can actually work together, but they're not too close where they're going to be taking out the exact same ships. We also want to make sure that we place one of our specific pirate tokens here on the swagger track and we'll place it at zero. Each of these green spots shows that we are going to level up to a different level. This is technically level one, nothing you get as a benefit at level one, but once you get to level two, you'll get to get uh, obtain an elite card, so one of those advanced action cards. When you get to level three, you're going to be able to uh, have an additional card in your hand, so different things will happen as we level up in Swagger. So now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our enemy stacks of tokens. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to separate out the ships, our naval ships here. These are our pirate ships and these are our merchant ships. Our pirate and merchant ships are all going to be shuffled together. You don't really need to break those two apart, but you do need to start with your naval ships separated. Your pirate hunters and your treasure fleets, you'll simply just want to shuffle those up and there's spots on the board and I'll show you where that you'll just place those and then they'll come out as certain events happen. So what we need to do is grab these naval ships, flip them upside down, give them a shuffle. I've kind of already shuffled them before the video, and we are going to count out eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight are also going to go in a separate stack on the board itself, along with these two. Okay. The rest of these I'm going to shuffle in with all of our merchants and all of our pirates to generate our generic um, pirate stack, or I should say ship stack. So now in this pile of ships, I will have naval ships, pirate ships, and merchant ships. On the board itself, you'll place your treasure fleets here, your pirate hunters here, and then those eight naval ships in this spot right here. Now we're going to seed the board with a total of 30 ships. And how we're going to do this is we're going to reveal territory cards. And so this one says Biloxi. What we're going to do is place a ship token in Biloxi and then another ship token in all adjacent locations. So here we have Biloxi. So we'll place a ship token here and then we'll place a ship token here, a ship token here, and a ship token here. So we have four out, we'll now place 26 more. I'm gonna do that off camera, you don't need to watch me do that. But that is how you're going to seed the ships on the board. Any ships that are remaining and not on the board after doing this, you'll leave them in a, in a pile and then you'll have different opportunities to be placing new ships, you'll grab from that uh, pile of tokens. So here we have our 30 ship tokens seated on the board. Now, before we start playing, we get to reveal all ship tokens in our current region and adjacent regions. We get to flip them face up. This is a nice little bonus because later on, we're just going to have to move into locations with face down ship tokens, and it might be a ship we can't defeat. But at the beginning, we have some that we can look at and see, okay, maybe we can beat them or maybe we can't. And you can see anything that's adjacent, you just look at your region and you just look at the locations that are adjacent to it. And if there's any ship tokens, you, we revealed it. Finally, we'll have each of our players draw four cards and then activate one chaos card. So we have one and two, three and four. Perfect. And then we have one, two, three and four. And those are their starting hands. We'll start with revealing a card for Sam over on the right. And we have, if the active player begins their turn on any sea territory announced, great seas ahead, but not all misfortune is bad. Reveal all ship tokens adjacent to the active player's sea territory. Also, the active player loses one movement point during this turn. Oh, okay. So this is for Sam. So when he begins and has his turn start when he's in a seized territory, this will activate. So we'll just place this underneath so we remember. Now this one's for Black Bart. Immediately announce. 
Surely some changing times ahead. The sea, she can be a friend, but now is a foe. Storms ahead hit hard. Utility boats and training crafts are lost at sea. You lose yours in the storm. The active player loses two movement points during this turn. Okay, so at the beginning, we need to remember for Bart's first turn, he'll have two less moving points. With that, I think we are ready to start the playthrough. I am pretty pumped about this. I'm really excited for this game. There's not a ton of pirate co-ops out there, except for the Dead Men Tells No Tales. But that one's really just, you know, picking up, bringing stuff out of the ship. This is actually piracy. You're going to be going out and sinking ships. <laughs> so I like how this one's a little bit different. And it does give you that feel of Mage Knight, at least a little bit, which you guys know how much I love it. So really excited for the playthrough. Hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next stop.